for the invite. All right. Well, whenever you're ready, and then we can, David, you can start, and then, you know, I can go if. And, okay. Uh, just tell our viewers you a little bit about the water. Virginia Academic RPA community practice. Well, thanks everybody for joining us, spending maybe 30 minutes or so to talk about something we're very interested in pursuing in Virginia and around the country, quite frankly, which should eventually occur. And we want to p thank UiPath for all their support and help as we're moving this forward. I'm Dr. David Rare with George Mason University, and I'm the co-founder of the RPA Initiative at George Mason at the Shar School with Doran, who's with me, who's also a co-founder. He'll talk a little bit more about our Virginia Academic RPA Community of Practice in just a moment. I want to make three quick points, and I'll turn it over to Dornan. Number one is, we are the first of its kind in America, and I believe around the world, where we're trying to organize all the academic institutions, higher education, uh, into a collaboration to advance software automation and to really grab its efficiencies, its effectiveness, all designed to make the student experience better. Secondly, um, we want to uh, bring innovative thinking to academic institutions. In my institution at George Mason, it's a great place. I love working there, but it's really moored in the past. We see a lot of private sector and even public sector institutions using software automation or approaching use of software automation but the academic world, I think, is not politically, but very conservative in how they move and go forward. And I think bringing this innovation and excitement from automation into these institutions is going to be very beneficial to everyone. And then thirdly, we are a private public sector collaboration, meaning George Mason supported us. We had a grant of seed money to support our RPA community of practice, but we're always looking for people who are really wanting to engage with the academic community in the future and support our efforts as we go forward. And with that, Dornan, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you where you can talk about the origin and what we're trying to do. Right. Well, thank you, David. And thank you, Loredana and UiPath again for uh, inviting, inviting us and giving us the opportunity to share here, um, you know, in our story. So please allow me just to tell you a few words about how the Virginia Academic RPA Community of Practice um, came about. And as David, David said, uh, this academic uh, community of practice is a national groundbreaking project. Uh, and the idea, it was inspired uh, actually from two things. There are two factors that determined the creation of this idea. First, it was a, um, a webinar that we did earlier uh, uh, this year. Um, called Delivering Better Student College Experiences Through RPA, the Virginia President, where we had invited four um, Virginia-based universities to share their use cases and their implement programs and implementation of RPA. Um, we had George Mason, of course, which they've been using um, RPA for vendor management, um, Virginia Commonwealth University, ECU, which were leveraging automation for grants management. Um, William and Mary was also part of that. But they've been using it for student online support. And lastly, the fourth one was the Virginia State University, which was leveraging software automation for student engagement. So this was the first factor that determined us to think about the idea of building this community of practice. Um, well, after this webinar, we sat down, we reflected kind of the things that were going on. And we've seen some gaps and some opportunities there um, that the higher education space could leverage uh, further. And the second uh, factor that contributed to it, it was um, the federal robotic process automation community practice, uh, which inspired us. And we have the former uh, co-founder of this uh, community of practice, uh, Gerard Bedorek, who's a uh, former CFO of the, of the GSA as well, and he also is uh, um, a founding member of our advisory board. So we, we brought these, all like, these ideas together and uh, we said, well, there you go. I think this is, will be something that for the higher education space, um, it's really much needed um, considering that 
the whole uh, industry is going through a uh, very uh, uh, how should I call it uh, an an uh, uh, and trans a significant change, um, and we believe that the higher education also has to be prepared to respond um, and and capitalize on the technological revolution. So, all that being said, here we are today um, uh, with a with the COP. So we were extremely delighted to see all those prestigious uh, you know school um, from. And all across the country, not only from Virginia, who, were, who attended that program earlier in the uh, in the spring, um, and uh, we received a tremendous interest. So, following that event, we applied uh, for and received um, a the so-called 4VA at Mason Seed Fund to launch this statewide program. Uh, the 4VA at Mason is a statewide initiative designed to improve efficiencies and effectiveness in higher education and research and promote collaborations among partner schools. Uh, currently, there are about eight Virginia-based universities that belong to this uh, consortium. Um, also, please allow me to tell you what the mission of this community practice it is. Uh, it's basically to help public and private colleges and universities in the Commonwealth of Virginia to become acquainted, educated, learn the power of software automation, collaborate across schools, interact with the private sector, and demonstrate how software automation can benefit these schools to be more effective and efficient and build higher levels of student experience for academic success. Uh, lastly, um, another um, uh, activity and work that we've been doing um, to, uh, to increase the, the work and the capabilities of our uh, uh, community of practice, we also established the world-renowned advisory board that has both practitioner uh, uh, from the field, from the academic higher, from the higher education uh, uh, schools, um, as well as educators, industry uh, folks, um, and uh, um, private sector one. So that's kind of in a nutshell uh, what the, um, the COP uh, has been doing. I'm going to kindly ask, maybe just throw it back to David and just tell us a uh, uh, what kind of benefits are we looking to provide to school as uh, we will be joining our community? Maybe yeah, thanks. More about thanks, that? Doran. Yeah, thanks, Doran. Mm -hmm. um, let me just jump in and say we announced it in late September, um, and we've gotten really good media. I think like we've had, I don't know, multi millions of media hits in different places around the country. We've had good media representation in Virginia. Uh, the provost of George Mason University just put an article out today about how George Mason is taking a lead on automation, which we think is a good thing, draws more t uh, attention to us in this world of cluttered information where we're responding to emails, getting texts, you know, like all the time, even in the middle of the night. And it's hard for people often to focus on things. So we're getting good pickup. We're also getting more schools to join. We've had several private schools in the state of Virginia, I should say, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, join already. And we've outreached to the head of the Virginia Private School Association, and they're going to be contacting all of their CIOs to join the practice, to join the community of practice as well. Having said that, what are the benefits and what are the costs? So as a university in Virginia, whether you're private or public, there's no cost to join. It is open to technology related or technology focused people and non tech focused people. Because what we found in our research is that the tech people generally get it and the non tech people get often confused. And we're trying to figure out how to communicate the benefits to the non tech audience as well as to satisfy the tech people who are worried about you know, cybersecurity, per personal privacy laws, things like that in Virginia, and make sure everyone kind of work together so we can push automation or encourage automation throughout the Commonwealth. Um, we have programs and content for both the tech and non-tech people, as I mentioned. We launched and we're getting good response across the, uh, the Commonwealth. We've already written to all the Virginia delegates and the Virginia State Senators in Richmond, as well as the Virginia Secretary 
of Education's department, alerting them to what we're doing. We invited Virginia members of Congress, although it's at the federal level, Virginia members of Congress and our two Virginia senators also to help spread the word and encourage their constituents to join. Um, now, the programs that we're initially offering, and I might mention to people, you can freely go to rpa-va.us, which is our website, which we're using to collect information and to really provide communication outwards to people. The, uh, the programs currently include automation education. Basically, we're doing a webinar at the end of this month on a how-to, what it's about, to get people more familiar with what's going on and how they can utilize it and the kind of rates of return they'll receive and the fact that they'll no longer, and I know UiPath talks about this a lot, and I totally agree with them, ending mundane and needless and tiresome tasks. So those individuals then could be reallocated to higher priority university uh, items. We're providing a school collaboration. So Mason could talk to Virginia Tech, who could talk to William and Mary. So people get to know each other and they all can learn from each other. Best practices where we know some things work and they work well. Why re keep reinventing the wheel, which drives up costs, where we can do talks and presentations on here's what I learned in my automation uh, results. Here are the things you should avoid or here are the things you should do to cut your upscale time. Um, we're inviting uh, briefings by the, our private sector partners to give them the latest, to give the universities and their staff the latest trends and the newest features of their automation advancement. So we have an engaged private sector. We're hoping that the university staff and the private sector staff will then be able to collaborate outside the, U, the RPA-VA-US website and get to know each other and work better together. Um, and early next year, which I think is exciting, we're going to have the community of practice offer internships and employment opportunities for students around the Commonwealth since we all know that RPA talent is in short supply. I'm an economist, so I always think, you know, demand for labor is high. Supply for labor is low. How do we change that? We increase supply. How do we increase supply? We create a process where the students could learn more about RPA, maybe get a certification, go through some questions so they really know, and then we're able to work with the private sector and public sector partners to forward resumes for internships and job opportunities. And then all the private sector partner or the public sector partner would need to do is interview them. And rather, I used to run some businesses, rather than having to spend a lot of HR time going combing through 75 resumes, maybe you get five or 10, but you know these people come kind of pre-certified or pre-checked. You still have to teach them your own process and your own kind of secret sauce on RPA and how it works. But at least they know, you know, where the door is, how it works, how to turn on the computer. I mean, I'm making it simple, but how to turn the computers on and they have a leg up on getting fully engaged in the businesses and in the public sector. Um, so we want to serve as a filter for that. And we eventually want to offer a qualified program that can train people as well. I, I know that UiPath offers its university, which is very well known by people, but this would be another place where students would naturally think, I'll go there because it's all about colleges and universities. And we get them through the program and we get them certified and then we can turn them out as more people who are interested in careers in RPA. And I hope you'll all visit the Art Virginia Academic RPA Community of Practice website again at rpa-va.us for updates and how to sign in to join. It's no cost to the universities. We also want private sec sector people to join. And we're now spending a lot of time working, frankly, to get all the schools engaged and all the personnel who need to know know about what we're doing so they can benefit from it at little cost. David, so, David I've yes. added all the links in the chat. 
Oh, good. So thank you very much. All the informations, yeah. very, very important ones. And um, I, I was wondering whether uh, the attendees have questions for you, if you want to answer. Yeah, I feel free. We, we In this room, we are six here. We have Arturo, Jeff, and I... I don't know how to, maybe you can help me, Jean, to, to pronounce your name better, but Jean, I think it's okay. So, only if you have questions for our speakers. Maybe you can, if you don't want to open your camera or unmute yourself, you can write in the chat if it's easier. Uh, so Sorry, somebody just knocked at my door. So, that's why I have to be away. Okay. Or keep it or keep it for the end. Yeah. We're yeah. not sure yet what you want to ask because yeah. there's yeah. more coming. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, I don't necessarily have a question on this, but I was just curious. Um, the reason I logged in is um, the company the company that I work with is called Reviture. And Reviture is an education partner of UiPath and has been for the last couple of years. Um, and we have an interesting model that we've just been having conversations with Martin recently about kind of joining all the, connecting the dots, if you will, with education as well as our company. So essentially we're like an IT staffing company, uh, but at a deeper level. So at the, at the end of the day, we are placing lots of automation candidates at clients, and we have a broad range of platforms that we work with, UiPath being one of them. Um, so I, I was interested to hear kind of, you know, what, what, the, um, what the university community is doing with this because we welcome those candidates into our company so that we can train them up more and then place them yeah. with um, companies that need UiPath. That's a great question. And Dornan, I'm, you can feel free to jump in if you want. I would initially say that right now we have a disconnect. And I don't know where the disconnect is occurring, but we have students interested and we have a program at Mason that teaches RPA generally, but I don't think the students have been led to the water yet. Yeah. And I got to figure out, we have to figure out, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say I, we have to figure out how to lead them to the water and then maybe give them a, an avenue for them to connect with you and other companies that are doing this, because I'm sure... You know, we also, we get emails like every week from federal, we're in, in Arlington, Virginia, where mm -hmm. George Mason has one of his base campuses. Our flag campus is at, in Fairfax County, which is only about 30 miles away from here. But we're getting constant questions from federal agencies on, do you have interns? Do you have people who know? We'll train them up on what we do at like Homeland Security. And then we'll probably hire them afterwards once they go through our boot camp because yeah. everyone has their own particular culture and things. So Dornan, you may want to jump in, but I think we'll need to connect. Maybe we can add a page of, you know, for further information, contact these companies, you know, and you can then kind of rifle through people that you might be interested or contact them because I was in private business for about 25 years before I became a professor. And I just want to make sure that we don't have the disconnect and we allow all the private sector to meet the desires of the academic world and the public sector. So we're able to one day have automation everywhere. Yeah. Well, you know, you talked about leading them to water and I guess the analogy to go along with that metaphor, uh, sometimes you've got a, a chasm between us and the water. So in other words, like, you know, I've been hearing today, about you know the hundreds and thousands of companies that are looking for these RPA associates, uh, our experience has been yes, you know we've been successful in placing many of these candidates at many of these companies, but a number of them are looking for the candidate that's got years of experience already with RPA, whether it be you know specifically UiPath or some others, um, and those are you know those are kind of unicorns. So, you know, all the talk about, you know, going to the UiPath Academy and, and it's free or, or going to George Mason and taking this class. And that's all true. And that's all fantastic. What we have to do is figure out a way to get them across that bridge right. uh, to the companies that are hiring and, and the companies that are willing 
uh, to accept an entry level person, knowing that they could spend the next year looking for the unicorn, or they could take the person now, grow them into the unicorn over, you know, whatever, three to six to nine months, and then they're right where they need to be. Yeah, that's exactly right, Jeff. I mean, everybody's looking hard for all the experience. And because every, as you said, everyone's looking for hard at the experience, the supply is low, the demand is high. So then people will just start shopping their wares and go, well, good offer, but it's not enough. Good offer, yeah. but you didn't throw in a club membership or whatever it is. That's the way the market works. Or yeah. I think it might be, and I don't want to pre judge of what companies are doing because they're all smart. Hopefully they're all making money. But I think it makes more sense to bring people in, move them up the ladder, because if they like and enjoy the culture, money doesn't mean everything to them. You know, and they may want to stay and you've got the unicorn and you treat people right and they they love working for you as opposed to we'll get them in, we'll do a project, we'll say thanks, but we don't have anything else for you. And they're back on the street and they're like, okay, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. Dornan, did you want to add anything? Yes, why not? Please, uh, let me say a couple of words because I think it would just fits into what we, we want to talk about uh, uh, next. And I, I totally agree. And we, we've seen this the study show, research show. We heard it today as well. There definitely needs to be more closer uh, and a closer and deeper collaboration between uh, the industry and the private sector and academia. Uh, that's a whole different discussion that uh, we don't want to get into that, but generally we encourage that. That's why we are here. We offer opportunities. We want to bring, we want to bring the students closer to the, to the, um, let's say their future jobs to the private sector, uh, or the public sector and vice versa. That's when it's our role. And this actually leads, leads me to basically sharing a few words about what we are, what our plans with the uh, COP in the future. So we're, we're, just because you heard that, um, or we're all familiar that one of the main hurdles in scaling automation is really keeping the momentum going. So this, we, we wanna really um, sustain an automation culture across the Commonwealth of Virginia and build on the reputation for Virginia. As you know, Virginia through us established a couple first of its kinds initiative through the uh, public sector, they launched this year um, uh, the RPA as a service of the Virginia Information Technology Agency. So there are a couple ingredients that can position the state uh, really to be a driver and sustain this culture of automation and innovation uh, um, in, in, in the U.S. and who knows where it goes from there. So this one for us, it means two things. We're thinking short term and long term. Short, short term, our priority is to to work toward 100% inclusion for all private and public schools in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, second, we want to further circulate our latest uh, uh, article that David mentioned uh, on some areas where the software automation is currently being used by schools across the United States. And again, just if you want to see this article, go to RPA today in there. Uh, um, I invite you to go there. Uh, on their October 10th uh, uh, release, and then you'll, you can educate and learn more about how software automation can be used on, and how it can benefit uh, um, uh, all across universities. Third, we want to expand also and include Virginia Community College in the community of practice. Um, we would like also uh, to invite both, like we said earlier, non-technical and technical academics and students um, and state, state businesses to join us uh, uh, in these efforts and you know sign up on our website. That would be kind of uh, uh, part of the process as well so that we can keep update them uh, with our latest work and activities and future work. Um, as well as we want to build really valuable, practical, and easy to understand content, uh, which I, we think that's very important. One of our strengths we believe is that we 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 are able to translate technical verbiage uh, into a non-technical understanding for the uh, masses. And lastly, uh, for the short term, is we wanted to seek private sector engagement uh, and support. These are kind of uh, the priorities for the short term. Uh, for long term, we really want to serve as a hub for the federal, state, and private sector 
internship and employment opportunities in this uh, software automation space. Um, we also looking to create a fundamental course on software automation and here software intelligent automation here we're starting with RPA and then we can uh, um, think we're thinking also about other automation technologies and generate also certificates for those uh, uh, rewarded to completing the course and we've seen earlier there were discussion about that too we think that that's really uh, um, an imperative as the industry and the ecosystem the communities are moving forward and lastly we want to help uh, academic faculty um, uh, to look to be able to look for resources for their courses. So we want to serve also as a resource for uh, uh, our academic peers uh, and others. Um, I don't know, David, do you think uh, uh, you want to add something else? Did I did I miss anything? On no, I think that's good. I think that's good. I mean, you know, it, in the short term, it's great that everything's moving so quickly, but in the long term, this has really only exploded in the last four, five, six, seven years. It's not like it's been around for 30 years and we're just talking about what market, what the market share is for automation. People are, in my conversations with even some people in the faculty and some people around the state, you know, I'll give them the pitch why automation's great and they'll go, David, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm like, okay, let's start from the beginning again. And we've got to make sure that we're doing this translation. Otherwise, that's going to not help us move exponentially forward, which is what I think the, the initiative and the COP want us, want, what want us to do in Virginia and around the country. And if I just may add to that, I think it's very important in this cl clutter of information that we make sure we clarify actually what the meanings of the words are when we want to communicate. So the message is understood and decoded by the recipient uh, entirely as it was addressed to. So you know, education is broad. Uh, it can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Training is different. It can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. So I think for us in this community, um, and in this technological uh, uh, change uh, um, times that we're living in, it's very important to make sure we have our message uh, um, communicated clearly. Otherwise, we're missing the moment. And we can, we're going to hear, I keep hearing this all the times in different communities and uh, uh, from different folks. Oh, we're just starting. We're just starting. And we, we, we're going to be here in five years and we're going to keep hearing. And we're just starting. We're just starting. I think one of the hurdles is that because there's a miscommunication, a misunderstanding between between what folks were trying to say and the folks that are meant to uh, understand the message. So we, we just can't afford this to be keep going. And I'm sure the industry agrees with me because in five years, if they're going to be still here, uh, uh, like we just started, we keep starting, we're just starting. And then, plus other countries, they're going to be way far off uh, um, uh, than us because yeah, dramatically ahead of us. Yes, yeah. because uh, uh, you know, here th this technology is most more important than we believe it is. It's just like reducing mundane work and you know repetitive work and the redefining processes and so on. It's also a strategic technology that it already plays out at geopolitical level. And at our adversaries uh, and competitors in the geopolitical schemes, they're also looking at this very, very closely. Uh, uh, so we want to make sure, as uh, um, the Joint Chief of Staff of the U.S. Air Force once said, if we're not moving fast enough, we'll be losing in our adversaries. So this is all about speed, understanding, clarity, uh, and implementation, of course. Yeah. And we can. I know we're coming to... To an end here soon but i just want to give you a quick story so in talking to one group they their university they're like well we're interested in rpa david we actually are focusing on rpa and we've got most of the materials but it's all sitting on the shelf or in the computers because we don't really understand it and therefore haven't been able to implement it so they're paying for stuff they're not using and i'm like well why are you paying I go well we got to process 
uh, process uh, discovery and no one remembered how it got started and we're all afraid to tell our boss we don't know. Which I thought was like, you know, in, at least in the business that I work with, it's always better to say, I don't know this, let's move forward, rather than I'm just going to hide this piece of cheese maybe for another year so it really smells bad and then get it fixed. Great story. Well, maybe now questions from the audience uh, here. Uh, we welcome to hear your, any comments or suggestions, ideas. Uh, we're very much open to those as well. Um, well, to David's point, um, I would say because we because our company works with which, by the way, we're we're based in um, Reston, Virginia. So oh, excellent! Yeah, yeah. you're very close then. We're yeah. very close. I'm in California, but uh, anyway. Um, to your point, uh, there are large companies that already know about RPA. Um, you know, so when we when we talk to the largest financial corporations, for example, they already have a head of automation. They already have an RPA director, et cetera. So they know what they're dealing with. Um, in my previous job, I worked on a uh, for a company that that um, does BPM as a platform. And we had a university program that was similar to what you're describing. And it, it was always kind of an interesting um, juxtaposition of education, which, you know, company or uh, universities like George Mason, obviously you're forward thinking, whereas, you know, so many universities like a computer science degree just pretty much means let's, let's learn Java and then set them, you know, free into the, and hope that they get a job somewhere. Yeah. And then when they try to get a job somewhere, it might be on Java, but they have no idea what RPA is or means. They don't know what BPM is or means. Low code, no code doesn't mean anything to them. And they think of that, they've been told in school that that's the future. And the future has been here for 30 years. So, you know, it's up to universities to pull the cheese out, to use your metaphor. Right, put right. In the center of the room and say, what are we yeah. going to do with this? Yeah. If we yeah. really care about getting our students ready, then they need to know what that cheese is and what it does and the right places to go to try to get a job with it. Yeah. And I think, I think that's a good point, Jeff. Universities, I, again, I love George Mason, and I think this applies. I was on the board of a university where I went to. I think it generally is just the culture. So I pitched them early on about, hey, RPA is great. UiPath is great. There's a lot of good program platform providers, huge industry, exponentially growing. And they said, well, David, do you think this is a four-year program, or do you think people should get a four-year degree and get a master's degree? And then I retorted by saying, well, there's a woman at the Department of Defense who in seven days figured out how to create bots. Yeah. And she found she was able to reconcile one bank statement where she found we did not collect or we did not get delivered a $150 million tank. <laughs> now, to me, that I, and I, I'm for education. I think there's a lot of reasons why you should have it. But I'm like, this is not a four-year degree. No. You know, so let's think differently about the world so we can get the students. I mean, I think you have to good, strong humanities background. You have to write. You have to understand logic. Think about things in progression, linear and nonlinear. But, you know, there's a demand out there that could be filled. And we should just be getting our students out there so they could fill the demand. Yeah, it could be an elective or it could be a core right. course, but it's not four years. It's yeah, a yeah. semester and you can even get it through a certification on top of that. So, I mean, right. Let me, well let me placed. Add two, things, two, two things, if I may, to this conversation, which I believe from my perspective are relevant. One is that there's lack of innovation yet in this because for about a century, at least the last century, America was doing pretty good. Uh, and it's called also the 20th century. Some people, majority, they call it the, the American century because there are a lot of good things that be happening uh, in the United States. And part of that was was the education and the investment in the human uh, capital. So a lot of people, they're still, uh, uh, you know, riding that boat saying, well, if it worked for 100 years, why should we change it? Like it means it's working these days. Because I believe a lot of them, they don't see what's out there. A lot of things are changing out there. The external environment be beyond the United States, they are 
changes, major changes that there's shifts that they're go going on uh, there. So I believe that's very, very uh, important. Second of all, we need to educate more and more our decision maker, lawmakers who are establishing you know, new rules. Because as you know, in life, and we are all risk averse, there are very few people who's going to take the first and they're going to go. But majority will 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 go with the flow once that you know it gets adopted. So you don't want to be neither the first, you don't want to be neither the last. That applies all over, all across the board in life. So the, the expectation is there. So we have to capitalize on those ones who already are innovators, they're leading these things, and then the rest will follow. But we need to build that excitement uh, um, to invest in these resources, to be persuasive, again, clear, clear and un make it easy for people to understand. We live a very complex world. We cannot just keep dumping complexity on people and expect intelligent uh, uh, automation or artificial intelligence or machine learning to figure out the meaning for them. That's not what we want. Sorry, that was my point. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, any other question? If not, maybe we, uh, we're ready to conclude. We were a little late, but we are everyone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just saying hi. I'm I'm actually at William and Mary. Uh, I'm in the I'm on faculty in, in the Master of Business Analytics. Um, awesome school. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> I've been here for for one year. So so yeah. No, it's it's something I've been. You know, I'm I'm glad this initiative it, it it's going on here. Uh, we're we're neighbors, and uh, you know, I'm I'm I'm. I see the value oftentimes, you know, sometimes it's the students that kind of, and, and employers that tells you, you know, where the new trends, uh, and and I'm starting into this RPA uh, uh, route. We, we do have a Sloane Center of Excellence here and everything, but uh, we're looking into uh, RPA. I signed up to the Academic Alliance, uh, the, the Academy, uh, UI path uh, to see if, if it's something that uh, at least at a smaller scale I can incorporate in my in my courses because definitely I see uh, the need uh, to train students particularly you know I'm, I'm in the business analytics program which is in the business school so uh, it's you know, it's, it's technical students, yes, but, but they're all within the business context, right? So, you know, we're not training computer scientists here. We're training uh, people that might be leading teams that are more or less technical, but, you know, I, I, I definitely see. Uh, so so, so I, I just want to say hi and, and, and you know, I, I think I got into the, into the right group here. Uh, the localized group. So, so thank you. Excellent. You Excellent. Do you, do you, do you, have you met Mike at William & Mary? Mike? Uh, uh, Mike Magdalena. He's, he's yeah, leading yeah. the department. He's teaching RPA. At, uh, uh, he's also our advisor on the um, COP. Oh, wonderful. I, I was not aware of, business. of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's you where should, I am. At. You should send him a note and just say, hey, I met the ROP. I met David and Dornan. And he'll say, oh, yeah, he did our webinar for us and talked about how William and Mary used uh, RPA when we you guys had a lot of online courses because of COVID right. to make sure. Yeah. And it was very successful. Yeah. No, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for the heads up. But like, he's a, I'm, he's I'm a great guy. He is a great yeah, guy. Learning, learning the ropes here. I just yeah. literally joined recently. He so. might, he oh, might ask. He might ask you if we if we picked up the tab. Please say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk uh, to him. Yeah, yeah, feel free to reach out, or we can connect you. You know, if you don't want, we can connect you with him. Um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, thank you. This was very informative. No, this was great. Yeah. What else do we need to do, Loredana? I don't know if. We do you have more? Oh, no, no, I just want to say thank you so much uh, uh, for the presentation. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not from Virginia Commonwealth. So I, I wish, uh, I hope that it will be national soon and so that I can be part of it. 
Thank you very much. Sorry. Yeah. And Loredana, okay. uh, just double checking. This is gonna, it's recorded, right? So people yes, yes, will yes. be able to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They will be able to see it later on the after we can add it. Oh, good. Excellent. Well, <laughs> so I we are over 20 minutes <laughs> wow. from what we prepared, but uh, it was a nice and very candid conversation. And uh, um, you, I don't know how to say, you extended your network. <laughs> We have a tour here, Jeff, as well, and Jim, who heard us. And uh, if this is all for today, we can stop uh, the conversation here. And thank you so much, all, for being here. Thank you so much, Doreen and David, for um, talking today and share all the insights and all you have done in the automation industry. I also added in the chat for, for the attendees here the links. We, we also have boots, you can see it up. So near the network, it's a self space. So it's like a self shop. So you join there and you will see also mm -hmm. Mason University. And um, they will, uh, we also have a button then they, that it directs to, to make, to Mason University as well. Excellent. Maybe I can just jump in and conclude by saying we yeah. really appreciate the time today. We have a passion of spreading this throughout the Commonwealth, eventually beyond the Commonwealth, because we think this is important for education, especially as a father of four kids currently in college at the same time, um, which is Herculean, I might add. But... <laughs> We also want to thank UiPath for making, we know a lot of these programs. You have a lot of choices. We're glad you chose us. We enjoy our partnership and we're really glad to be working with you guys to advance software automation, not only in the public sector, but around the academic sector, which is part of the public sector. But I always kind of pull it out a little bit because it's not like government, you know, it's teaching students, but for what UiPath does in the academic center as well. So thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for being our partners and your greatest care in automation. Thank you, thank you. Sure. Thank, thank you. you guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 All the best. Bye-bye. Stay in touch.